Here we're going to look at um, some different dealings with the rational zeros theorem. Okay. So essentially what this is, is this is taking a polynomial and you are looking at the constant term and the coefficient of the leading term and you are creating what's called all possible rational zeros of that polynomial. Okay, so this is another way to go about trying to find the potential zeros of a polynomial. Or it's a way to find values that you could use in your synthetic division process. So the way it works is, first of all, you have what's called P, and this comes from your constant value. When we're talking about your constant, we're talking about the factors, so your constant factors. Now the other piece that we have is we have Q, and this is going to be your coefficient of the leading terms. and their factors. Okay. So essentially I have here, I have a polynomial 4x squared plus 2x minus 5. So when I'm talking about P here, my constant factors would be the factors of 5. So we would be talking about plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 5. The sign doesn't matter when the polynomial, it's just the number itself. Now when we're looking at Q, Q is coming from the um, leading term. So this is 4. So my factors here would be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4. Now in order to actually create your um, your term, we are looking at what's called P over Q and all possibilities that go with it. So we have P over Q. So plus or minus 1 over plus or minus 1, okay? Plus or minus 1 over plus or minus 2, so this is going to be plus or minus 1 half. Then we're going to have plus or minus 1 fourth we're going to have plus or minus 5, plus or minus 5 halves, plus or minus 5 over 4. Okay. So notice we did each P over Q. Okay. Now by writing it in terms of plus or minus shortens the amount of terms that we actually have to write. So let's look at putting this actually into practice here. So, let's say that we have this polynomial and we want to use synthetic division and the quadratic formula when necessary to find all the zeros of the polynomial, rational or otherwise. In other words, what we're doing is we're factoring the polynomial. So the first thing we have to do is we have to find our P's and Q's. So again, my P's are going to come here from my constant term. So this is going to be plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. We then have my Q's. So here, your Q's are going to be plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. So we have to find your P over Q. So P over Q, we're going to have P over Q. So plus or minus 1, plus or minus 1 third, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 2 thirds. Okay, so P over Q. 1 over 1, 1 over 3, 2 over 1, 2 over 3. So now with that, I have a huge polynomial here, and I actually want to factor it down. So I'm going to go ahead and start with some synthetic division. So I have 3, negative 4, positive 1, positive 6, negative 2. 
So one thing I may start with is say negative one. And I'm doing that because I've got a negative in the end, so I'm hoping that maybe I get a zero. So here I have three, negative four, one, six, negative two. We're gonna drop this down and see what happens. Let's drop down the three. Again, bottom times the box goes underneath. So this is negative three, and then vertically add, gives you negative seven. Again, bottom times the top is seven. When you add, it gives you eight. Bottom times the top, so negative eight gives you negative two. Bottom times the top is going to give you two. Add it together, you get a zero, okay? Now, the more synthetic division you do, the quicker you're going to become yourself. Now, with this, you can see we ended up here with a zero. So this tells you right away x plus one, because this is negative, is going to be a factor. Now, the other thing we know is that this started as an x to the fourth, and as we did it, we ended up with an x to the third. Now, that being said, I need to keep moving. So with that, I've got my new um, term here. I'm going to add a new box. I have a 3, 7, 8, and 2. So one of the things you can try is negative 1, but essentially you're going to keep uh, working your terms until you get something that um, does what you need. I'm going to go ahead and use one third just for uh, time's sake. And I'm going to show you here why I'm using one third. So we're going to drop that three. So we're going to multiply. Three times a third is going to give us one. Vertically add, we get negative six. Times a third gives us negative two. Vertically add, we get six. Times a third gives us two. When we add, we get a zero. So this right here says again that we have a factor. That factor is going to be x minus one third is going to be our factor. But now we have an x squared, okay? So again, we started with an x cubed. This becomes my x squared term, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So here I have 3x squared minus a 6x plus 6 is equal to 0. And in this case, we want to be able to solve it. So the first thing I would, I would do is um, pull, a, uh, pull the 3 out. So here, this would be the 3 on the outside. And I have x squared uh, minus a 2x plus 2 is equal to 0. And I want to go ahead and remember that I have this 3 out here that has to be used. So here I've got this term right here that needs to be factored. And one of the things that I would do is I would use your quadratic formula. Okay. If you need a quad refresher on the quadratic formula, one of the things I would recommend doing would be to um, go back and take another look at um, some algebraic, but just in case, we have x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac and the whole thing is over 2a. Remember, a, b, and c are going to be your coefficients here. What you're going to end up finding is that x is equal to 1 plus or minus i. So that being said, we can look at your factors. And in this case, we would have 3 times x plus 1 times x minus a third times x minus 1 plus i times x minus 1 minus i. And these would be the factors of our problem that we would have. Okay. Now since all you're asked to do is find the factors of the polynomial, this is exactly where you would go ahead and stop. So here you can see 
two of our factors are rational um, factors and two of them are complex. All right, let's look at another example here just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Okay. So we're going to do the exact same thing that we just did. So first and foremost, we're going to look at P's and Q's. So here, my P's are going to come from the 12. So plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 12. In this case, my Q is going to be plus or minus 1. Luckily, my coefficient here is a 1. So when we look at P over Q, essentially it's what we found for my P. Okay. Now, with that, we're going to start our synthetic once again. So we're going to go ahead and get it set up so we can make an educated guess on what our possible factor may be. So we have 1, negative 3, negative 3, 9, negative 4, and 12. We're going to bring this down, draw our bar across the bottom, and go ahead and get started. Now notice I have a 1, a 3, 3, 9, and 12. Majority of these are um, multiples of 3, or um, yes, work with 3, and so I'm going to go ahead and give that a try, see what happens. So here, 1 and 3 is 3. Add them together, you get 0. Multiply. Bottom times the square is 0, gives you negative 3. Bottom times the square, negative 9, gives you 0. Bottom times the square, add it together, gives you negative 4. Bottom times the square is negative 12, add it together, gives you 0. Again, this is the value we counted on. And this tells us here that we have x minus 3 as a factor. Let's start again. Again, I'm going to put my box right here. We're going to bring down this first term. And we're going to go ahead and do the solutions. And then just like before, we're going to take a look. This started as x to the fifth, and it became x to the fourth. 1, 3, but I end in an even of 4, and so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and change gears. I'm going to look at what happens if I choose an even. I could be wrong, but because this ends in an even number, there's a good chance that an even number in my factor is going to work. Bottom times the box, 2, add it together, gives you 2. Bottom times the box, 4. Add them together gives you the 1. Bottom times the box is 2. Add them together gives you 2. Bottom times the box is 4. You get a 0. Again, that's what I wanted. So here, x minus 2 is my factor. Now, I went from x to the 4th. This means now I'm down at x cubed. So being down at x cubed says I need to go at least one more time with my synthetic. So we're going to go ahead and set that up. We're going to arrow down that first term and drop it. Now, all of these are positive. So I'm going to guess that negative 2 might do it. Bottom times the negative 2 gives me multiply again times the negative 0. Again, what I my third. Notice I am now down here at an x squared term. So once you get to x squared, this is where you can stop synthetic if you want. And we would go ahead and solve. We have x squared plus 1 equals 0. So we got to solve. So x squared equals negative 1. So x equals plus or minus i. So here, if we take a look at our factors, in this case, we would end up with x minus 3 times x minus 2 times x plus 2 times x minus i times x plus i. 
So there you have it. That is how we use the P's and Q's in order to give us a range of zeros to test from to figure out how to factor higher level polynomials when those polynomials might include both rational zeros and complex. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I look forward to speaking with you next time.